So the myth is that men aren't attracted to successful, powerful women. But the truth is men are totally attracted to successful, powerful women. So if you've ever heard like, you're so intimidating, um, type in the chat bar or send a like or heart if you've ever heard that you're intimidating. I know a lot of women have and a lot of women that I work with have. And I wanna explain where that comes from and why to not let that stop you from finding what you want in love and also what might be going on underneath the surface. So I've worked with teachers, lawyers, doctors, artists, entrepreneurs, accountants, you name it. It doesn't matter how traditionally, you know, smart, powerful, or masculine a certain role is. It doesn't have to keep you from having a great relationship. And I even cringe at even saying that it might. But there is this myth out there that if I'm in my feminine, it means I'm going to be soft or I'm going to be passive or I'm just going to, you know, have to give up my goals and dreams. F that, that does not have to happen. You do not have to give up who you are in order to be in a great relationship. But being in a relationship and dating does take a different skill set. So if you imagine if you were traveling to a different country, if you're going to Russia, you might learn a few phrases of Russian. Now, not that men and women are totally different in the way that they speak, but oftentimes women approach dating the same way that they approach their career. And I love there's this cake song that's from a while ago, but you might know it. It's called long skirt or a long short skirt and a long jacket. And it's about this woman who totally has her stuff together and the singer is, is mesmerized by her. And so if you're a woman who totally has her stuff together, you're smart, you're successful, you're ambitious, but you feel like love is the one area of your life that you just can't sort out and you're feeling afraid of like, what is all this feminine energy stuff? I just want to reassure you, it's not about becoming a wallflower. It's not about becoming a homemaker, although if you choose to do something like that, that's fine. And it's also not about just giving up your hopes, your dreams, or your ambitions. And for the right man, that will not be intimidating. That will be super inspiring, but with a caveat. So a lot of times, if we are very driven and ambitious, we are very direct. We can be maybe a bit cutting sometimes. We can maybe even be a bit shaming or emasculating. So it's not that you're doing anything wrong. You know, no one's ever taught women, like, or people in general, like how to communicate in a way that really inspires the best out of other people. So especially if you grew up with like critical parents or it was never good enough or you feel like you're a perfectionist, you might just be used to kind of coming towards your conversations, dating or otherwise, with an agenda, with an outcome, and also maybe a bit of protection mechanism. So I know myself, I can get very controlling in my communication if I'm afraid or anxious or feeling impatient or not connected to my body. This doesn't mean they have to like slow down and have a yoga voice or something like that. But it does mean that the way we communicate makes a huge difference in how people receive us, both verbally and non-verbally, what messages are we sending? And then how does this apply to text or online dating? Well, even though text is just words and, you know, 90% of communication is nonverbal, the energy behind a text still matters. And that's why silly things like emojis and all of that still add a lot of context to a text. Um, saying something without an emoji versus with an emoji, not that you need to get all anal about like analyzing that, but there are ways through text that we communicate our energy, uh, whether it's uh, adver inadvertently or, or directly. So the reason I'm bringing all this up is because I love it when women are going after what they want in every area of their life and their love life is no different. And actually, I find that women who are, you know, very successful and very direct in their careers, there's, there's a ton of men who really appreciate that and a ton of powerful men who appreciate that. Sometimes women who are very successful will say, well, you know, men say I intimidate them or the guys who like me are, you know, they don't have a job. Like they think it's so cool that I'm doing all these things, but I don't respect them. And you don't have to settle. You don't have to just put up with, you know, what you can get. Because it's really important that you respect your partner, um, regardless of their background, regardless of their financial, you know, situation. It's important that you know what's important for you in terms of respecting and, and feeling attracted to your partner. So what I find is that a lot of times, if we're really gung-ho in, in our career and in other places of our life, we might have developed like this very um, outward projection of confidence and clarity, but our hearts actually maybe haven't been as developed. Like we might not feel as comfortable being vulnerable or sharing our feelings or even saying what we want in a way that's open versus saying what we want where it sounds more like a command or more like a demand. So yes, it is great to be able to be succinct and direct and powerful in our communications. But like I was saying earlier with the metaphor of going to another country, it's also good to just understand your tone, your energy, 
And then if you have an agenda or an outcome or you're trying to force something, what is that about? Is it a fear of rejection? Is it a fear of, ban of abandonment? Is it just a fear of losing control or a fear of maybe being seen as weak? Sometimes we're afraid to be seen as weak because again, maybe we had critical parents or someone in the past who was really hard on us. And so we don't wanna let our guard down. If, if our emotions were used against us, then that can feel like a very tender place. But by being vulnerable in our communication, by being uh, approachable in our communication, it gives us a lot of insight about the other person. If they still do something that hurts us, then we need to set a clear boundary or maybe not be dating that person or maybe not have them in our life. Now, in every relationship, people will get hurt because the more you love, sometimes the closer you get to someone and the closer you get to someone, the smaller things start to feel like bigger things. And so I've talked about in other uh, things about this escalating expectation. So we have an expectation that if I'm in love, I'm never going to feel sad. Or if I'm in love, I'm never going to hurt. But loving involves feeling all the range of emotion, the full expression of emotion, which is super tender and also super beautiful. Uh, it really cracks our heart open and helps inspire us to be the best version of ourselves. So a lot of times I'll hear also, well, why aren't men working on this stuff? And if, you know, if women, if men just stopped being assholes, women wouldn't have to worry about how they communicate. And I agree with you in some ways, because I think men in many ways can be entitled and can be very stuck in their ways. But there's a ton of men who are doing their work, who are open to changing their communication, who are becoming more and more aware of what they've received from just being a man in, in our society. Uh, and yes, some men are assholes and some people are assholes. Like there's going to be people that aren't necessarily good, high integrity people. And I'm sure at certain points in their life with certain people, they are amazing people. So we all have these little shadowy aspects of our personality that comes out sometimes and sometimes it just gets triggered in a certain situation. But my desire and my question for you is, you know, over the next week, as you're messaging someone online or sending texts or even walking into a crowded subway platform or a coffee shop, just notice, like, am I bracing? Am I protecting? Am I projecting like the sense of total confidence, being a badass? And sometimes we need that and we do that and that feels good. But maybe are you going into your dating situations with that same level of defensiveness or reactivity? I know I've had to work pretty much my whole life and I'm still working on being responsive instead of reactive. Because when we're responsive, then we're not letting a situation or an emotion or a person get the best of us. And we can have, ironically, more control. It's like the less defended we are, in some ways, the more control we have because we're so connected to our bodies and to our hearts that we can make really powerful choices instead of just coming in with an agenda. So thank you so much for, um, for joining us on tonight's episode. I'm on a little different uh, background because we have some guests visiting from Toronto and uh, it's, it's Halloween night. So there's a lot of stuff going on. So I'm really glad that you tuned in. I just want to check my notes and see if there was something else that I wanted to, um, to share. No, I think, I think that was it. <laughs> just encouraging you to continue to be powerful women, continue to go after you want in life and in love, but do pay attention to your approach and allow, allow there to be space and softness in your approach, not because you have to be soft or like a damsel in distress, but because the way that you come across sometimes we don't, we're not aware always of like our tone or our control or agenda or protection or our projection. So if you would like some insight in how to approach dating in a way that's still super powerful, but also invites the right partner forward, then I would love to chat. We offer free 45 minute breakthrough to love sessions and either me or someone from my team will be connecting with you and giving you lots of insight and value and clarity on what's been going on and also what it is that you want. So stay powerful, stay emboldened, and also stay connected to your heart. Mwah.